Hi, my name is Steve Fender. I'm from Fender's Fish Hatchery. Here, we're based here in Ohio. We've uh, been stocking ponds and lakes and managing lakes for since 1956. And what we're doing this video for here today is to uh, help you better manage your body of water and grow big fish. Basically, everybody stocks a pond and want big fish. And we've done a video earlier on pond stocking ratios, and you'll want to refer back to that if you're stocking a new pond to get the right ratio so you have a good balance in your pond to begin with. And what we're going to talk about here is growing big bass, big bluegill, big catfish, whatever you have in your pond, whatever your goal is for your pond, whether it's growing big bluegill or big cats or bass, we're going to educate you on that so you know how to do this. Primarily, the first thing you want to do is you want to have a good balance of fish. I have customers come in with all kinds of ideas, things you want to do, uh, <clears throat> some good, some bad. Uh, if I have a customer come in and wants to put in bass only, I always try to inform you, you need to have a forage fish. You have predators, you have forage, and you have to have both of them together or you don't have a good balance. When you stock your pond with bass and bluegill, what you're doing is your bass is your main predator, your bluegill is your main forage fish. Bluegill will also act as a control fish too, as in they eat a lot of bass eggs and a lot of bass fry, keeping the bass from becoming overpopulated, and at the same time they're reproducing and making feed for the bass. Now bluegill makes such a good forage because they spawn all summer long. Not necessarily the same one, but different sizes of bluegill spawn all summer, making feed all year long for all your different varieties of fish, whether it's cats, bass, uh, perch, even the other bluegill. Now the way you want to enhance the growth of the overall body of water, general good management and stocking properly will grow nice fish. You want to go to the next level, start feeding with pellets. We sell a pellet and you can buy it at your local feed stores and like that. Keep in mind when you buy fish feed, you want to buy a pellet that's small enough that they can eat it comfortably. And you're going to focus mostly on the bluegill as far as you're feeding anyhow. So you're going to get a pellet that's about an eighth inch in size that floats and also find the highest protein you can get. 40, 50 percent protein somewhere in that, in that uh, area is what you want to shoot for. If you buy a 20 or 25 percent protein, you'll find out the bluegill just don't eat it as well. They're not going to grow as fast, they won't like it, you just won't have the same results. So keep in mind, eighth inch pellet and something in about that 40 to 40 to 45, even 50 percent range if you can find it. That will grow big bluegill. When you grow big bluegill, big bluegill obviously make more eggs, making more feed for your bass when the eggs hatch out and make fry. Also what happens when you're feeding a bluegill, they're not stealing bass eggs and they're not eating the, eating the bass fry. So now your bass population gets larger. So now you're going to have more big bass, big bluegill, the whole nine yards. So by feeding with pellets is a very, really big, big benefit. Now we have some customers that go directly to the bass with feed. And at that, what I'm meaning is they buy feeder minnows, fathead minnows. We sell a feeder minnow here, feeder minnow that's about an inch to an inch and a half in size. Adults are two inches. That's as big as you're going to get a feeder minnow or a fathead minnow to get. So you're not going to ever establish them in your pond because of the fact that you know two inch are eventually going to get all eaten up. But when you put the minnows in, they spawn as long as they're in there. They're going to spawn four or five times throughout the whole summer, making feed continuously. And if you have a lot of brush, a lot of structure, hiding places for them, that's also going to give the the fathead minnows a chance to survive long enough to reproduce several times. You'll want to stock minnows every spring, every fall, even through the summer, whenever you can. And the more you put in, the more the bass have to eat, the faster they're going to grow, the bigger they're going to get. Now, the downside to all this, when you're pushing all this food into the pond, what you're going to find out is your fishing is going to be a little bit tough. Fish bite for two reasons. They're either hungry or you aggravate them until they hit on a bait. When you get to feeding the bluegill and the bass aggressively like this with pellets and minnows, you're going to find out that you've taken that one element away now you're going to have to become a better fisherman. Um, being as they've got all they want to eat, they're going to be harder to catch, they're going to be more choosy about what they, they bite on, but that's a sign of a good pond. When I have customers call me and tell me they can't catch their fish, that typically it's because they have a very well-balanced pond, the thing is doing very good. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You are going to have a little tougher time catching fish, so you just have to become a better fisherman. But stock with minnows is a real plus. A little bit of rule of thumb, if you're, stock, if you're feeding with pellets, aggressively you can feed four to five bags of feed per summer. That's 50 pound bags. That's aggressive. If you feed two to three bags, you're still going to make a big difference. It's going to help. I've seen customers feed uh, five and six bags per surface acre of water. That kind of gives you a little bit of rule of thumb what you're going to get into as far as feeding. Now as far as minnow stocking, 
I have customers dump anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 in per acre. It just depends on how aggressive you want to be on growing your fish. 1,000 per surface acre of minnows twice a year will def definitely make a difference. You're dumping more food into the bottom end of the pond by doing this. You're going to find out that everything in that pond will feed on the minnows. Your bass, your bluegill, perch, crappie, anything you have in there is going to feed on minnows very well, so you're going to help everything grow. By following these guidelines, I can guarantee you will not have stunted fish. As long as there's food there, they eat, they grow, they can't be stunted. So yes, this is all common sense approach to raising nice fish in your pond. Uh, the other thing is, like I said earlier, keep plenty of brush and cover in your pond so you have plenty of areas to hide and you're going to have more survival on your little, on your little uh, minnows. The other thing that helps is you have a better survival rate on your bass, your bluegill, perch, and crappie and stuff like that too, so that helps too. Catfish will also eat on pellets. Uh, if you get to feeding the catfish on pellets, they won't compete against the bass. So feeding the catfish, they get lazy, they eat off the pellets, they leave all your other fish alone. So here again, now you're making more fish in your pond, so you're getting more big fish out of your pond. So, you know, it gives you a chance to raise big bass for trophy fishing, or is you just, you want to take more fish out to eat. Whenever you boost that, it's like fertilizing your garden. The more fertilizer you put to it, the more these, your plants are going to grow. The more minnows you put to your fish or fish feed, the bigger your fish are going to grow. My customers that do these kind of practices have really, really good success and grow big fish. The other thing you want to keep in mind when you're boosting these numbers like that, you want to make sure you either have aeration of some kind, either as bottom aeration or surface aeration, and also make sure you have, or if you have water flow running in, whether you have a spring, fresh water, um, runoff, whatever, you want to make sure that your oxygen levels don't get too low if you're in an area where you have hard winters like we do. If you have a large concentration of fish because you've been feeding them all season, your likelihood of fish kill is a lot greater because there's more fish using more oxygen. So that, like I'm saying, you need to have some sort of variation if you don't have a spring. If you have a really good spring, that could take care of that also. But just make sure you don't have a winter kill. Watch things out that way a little bit. Um, the other thing is um, your perch and crappie. Uh, typically, they won't feed on pellets. If you can sometimes get perch to feed on pellets, it's not very common. But uh, the perch and crop will also feed on the minnows very well. So that's going to make more feed for them too. So then if you want to stock walleye, stock and walleye, you know, you put minnows in. Whenever you put minnows in, you just basically change the dynamics of the whole pond. And you can do more of what you want to do for this pond. If you go to our website at www.fendersfishhatchery.com, you'll find our product, on our product page, you'll find my book. I wrote a book here several years ago that basically takes, takes you through the steps of raising fish uh, pond management, um, weed control, just anything pond related, it's all in that book. So if you go to our website, check that out, you may want to get a copy of that to help you raise your fish.